Hi everybody, welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to do a no makeup makeup look so your skin looks really, really dewy, really natural, cover up all these scars, all your acne, and it's just gonna look really, really pretty at the end. This isn't at all full glam like Instagram makeup. This is very much like back to school, sadly that it's that season now, but you can wear this to school, you can wear it to the mall, and it's just gonna make your skin look really, really glowy and fake perfect skin, basically. Right before we get into the video, just please make sure you are subscribed and have my notification bell turned on so you get notified every single time I upload a new video. Now that that's all out of the way, let's get into the video. The first thing you wanna do is take care of your skin. I added the Purito Unscented Centella Green Serum. I have never experienced better results with a product. That serum changes my skin like in one day. And then most importantly, follow up with a good sunscreen. This is the CeraVe Hydrating Sunscreen with a tint. So this sunscreen is actually what's responsible for like the glowy skin right now, the kind of like even tone, you can still see my scars, but this does kind of even out your skin and it's a really, really amazing one that I've literally been wearing every single day. It's definitely more important to prep your skin than to just put on a bunch of products. So what I'm gonna be going in with is the Glossier Future Dew Oil Serum Hybrid. So they say you can use two pumps for your whole face, but I'm actually just gonna go in with like three fourths of a pump and focus this like where I want to be really, really glowy. So right here, up here, and then right here, and then oh, always put a little bit in your neck. And then just kind of pat it in everywhere because the more hydrated you are, the better your texture is gonna be because dry skin does not look good under makeup. Speaking on hydration, the primer I'm gonna use is a Milk Hydro Grip. It just makes your skin really, really grippy. And I used to love a really pore filling primer, but since I started using this one, it's definitely become my favorite. As you can see, I've literally used it all. And because it's so tacky, the makeup just kind of sticks to it. I'm not gonna be going in with a full coverage foundation. The one I'm gonna be using is the Misha BB Cream. So I'm going in with a little bit over two pumps. It might be a little excessive, but it's just what I like to do. And then I'm gonna go in with a beauty blender just cause I find this gives the best initial application. This one I'd actually classify as like more of a CC cream. Do you see how well that's covering my skin? This is literally my favorite makeup product ever. Like if I could only have one, it'd definitely be this one because it gives you the coverage of a CC cream, but the look of a BB cream. So it's super, super natural. You literally cannot tell to the point that if I wear this, people are like, oh my God, your skin looks so good. And I'm like, it's makeup. They're like, no, it's not. And I'm like, I know, but it is. Do you see how dewy I look? How like, it's not grabbing onto anything. And I have a mirror right here. I'm looking really, really up close. This looks like skin. And I don't have perfect skin. You guys know this. It's textured, there's acne. And this one just makes my skin look so good. Like to the point that you could just put this on and head out the door. And do you see how fast that just blended? Literally three seconds, it's on. But it's literally crazy. I've never experienced a product like this that has such a high coverage that doesn't grab onto anything. I'm gonna go in with a brush. I'm not gonna use this to blend it, but this is the Morphe M224. And I'm gonna dip into my Glossier concealer, the tiniest bit. And then I'm actually gonna go right here and just kind of put the excess because you don't want too much product on here. What you're gonna do with this is, I'm looking straight into a mirror. You're literally just gonna put a little bit down there. Do you see where I just put it? And then right here, you're kind of gonna wing it out like that. That's literally all you need. You don't need that huge triangle. That's just gonna accentuate texture in this area. So over here is actually a thing models do. You cover this little redness area and pull it up and everything's just gonna look more lifted. And then I'm actually gonna go in with my finger. You can't do this with all formulations, but this concealer is called a stretch concealer and it literally stretches so well. It's very oil-based. It's very like not greasy, but it's very much like oily, I guess. It literally looks so pretty under the eye. It doesn't crease and it just looks gorgeous. And then I'm gonna go into my beauty blender and just in that area, I'm really gonna tap it like this just to make sure my finger didn't lift anything. Cause when you're going in with your finger, you might touch something and kind of rub it off. So I'm just gonna go in with this to make sure everything is seamless. And then using that sponge, I'm not going in with any extra product, but I'm just gonna close my eyes and put the excess product on my lids. And most people have really, really veiny lids and it definitely makes you look a lot more tired. So doing this little concealing literally helps you so much and it's the tiniest amount of product. This is probably my best tip ever. Most concealers get in here. So this one isn't creasing. It's kind of like technically creasing, but literally it's just how like like science work, not science, but like your body works. If you look up where your like skin goes down, product's gonna settle in there. That's just how it works. There's no way to avoid that. Even if you put powder, it might still be there. So what I do is I look up, see where it is, and I literally grab my finger and rub it off because it's right like here. You don't have dark circles under your lash line. So if you rub that product off, it's just gonna save you so much trouble. I'm literally giving y'all my secrets. Y'all are gonna look 
so good after this video. Then I'm going to be going in with a full coverage concealer. This is the Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer. And I'm going to put this right here. This one is very, very similar to my skin tone. If you're wondering, it's porcelain. That same brush I use for the under eye, tap off the product and go in with this. This one is a little lighter than my skin, the tiniest bit, but it's really, really close. And then I'm going to do what's called spot concealing. So where I have bad acne like here, I'm just going to put that over it. And do you see how it's a little lighter, but it's like really close to my skin tone. You do not want to go into the concealer that's too light. Even darker than this would be good. And what you can actually do, you can get a full coverage foundation if you don't have a full coverage concealer and go in with that but this is what I have and this is what I like to use. And I actually don't use my sponge for this. I use a little silicone applicator. This one is from Misha. Obviously everything is linked down below. And so if you guys wanna support me, please use those links. They're affiliate links. So I earn a small commission from each purchase, a really, really small one, but it really does help me and my channel a lot. Then going with that silicone pad, I really like this cause it kind of mimics like your skin. So it just blends it out really well. And I find that it doesn't absorb a lot. So really gently tapping, literally like basically not even touching my skin. I'm just going in and patting over those areas so gently because you don't want to disturb the product under it you just want to cover the stuff that's on your skin right now now you have a really really nice dewy base that's not accentuating texture but it basically covered like everything so like I said it's acting like a full coverage foundation but giving you the finish and I could literally pull in any person in this room and nobody can tell me I look cakey because I know I don't mainly I use cream and liquid products just because I find that it gives my skin the best finish and I find that if I put a lot of powder layers it just really accentuates my texture and especially because I do have have drier skin around my mouth and on my cheeks it can make me look a hundred times worse so by using those cream products my skin remains looking dewy and glowy while still giving me the coverage I need so my favorite line for this is definitely the Fenty line and my favorite brush is actually the Fenty brush I use all Morphe brushes literally if you look at my collection this is all Morphe brushes because they're so inexpensive this one is definitely expensive but if I could tell you guys to splurge on one like applicator tool it'd be this I could have used this for my whole face and I would have looked so good this brush is literally just the perfect perfect like everything and I've never found a foundation brush that I enjoy but this one I really really like it's the perfect weight it's cute and the bristles I'm pretty sure are synthetic so they just apply the product really well and don't absorb it so I'm gonna go in with the Fenty bronzer mine is in the shade macchiato and I'm just gonna grab the tiniest bit and I dab all my products on the back of my hand just to make sure I'm not applying too much the biggest difference between bronzer and contour is your bronzer should be more warm toned so the undertone of it should be way more orange and red well the purpose of a contour is to mimic shadow so you want it to be a lot more cool tone because if you think about it bones like gray and white so the shadow it creates is like black like even if you see right here do you see how this like shadow is gray and the place you want to put this is right above your cheekbone so if you grab your brush and just stick it in right under your cheekbone is where you put contour and kind of like right on the cheekbone is where you want to blend this and as you can see I'm using the tiniest bit for this I'm going in with really gentle patting motions you can see my hands like I'm drinking tea like I'm basically not applying any pressure and I'm just patting it on I like to really put it in here and then especially on my nose instead of contouring my nose I just kind of pat it all over and then bring it to the sides to give you that sun kiss look then I actually put it here I'm not gonna contour my jawline with this product and then in my opinion the best place to put bronzer is the forehead I really like to focus this on the sides just because I do have a smaller forehead I find that it can make me look really muddy if I put it up here then going in with my beauty blender and that bronzer and then again tap it off my hand and I'm just gonna put this in the outer place of my eye and kind of bring this up and this just again warms up that area because you don't want your eyes looking really pale. It still looks really, really natural, but that just added the tiniest bit of warmth to make you look more sun-kissed. Then going with the Fenty Cream Blush, this is in the shade Petal Poppin'. This is a really, really pinky one, as you can see. Do you see that? It's so pinky, but it literally looks so pretty on the skin. I've never liked pink blushes until I tried this one. Then I'm gonna be going in with this brush. You can actually use the same exact Fenty brush, but I just like to use one that's a little sparser for this because it like puts less product on. People like do the smiling thing and put it here, but blush can actually change your face shape even more than contour. Contour. I like to put it right up here not in the center I like the center to be bright the outside to be warm and the high points to be really blushy so as you can see I'm actually starting it up here and I'm just gonna tap that in and then blend it down a little bit do you see where I put the blush here like this side just looks way better than the side that doesn't have any blush and even if I like do a little turn you can see this just looks more lifted even though it's the tiniest little like shade of pink here it just makes you look a lot more like alive I know I've been complaining about powder this 
this entire time, but I will be using a setting powder just in my really oily areas and places that I really think requires powder. So I'm going to go in with the Glossier Wowder. This one is extremely mattifying. It's probably one of my most mattifying powders, so I really do enjoy using this on my nose. I'm going to be going in with my Tati Beauty Blendiful. If you have a powder puff, it's basically the same thing. I just like to use this one because it's really, really fluffy, so I find that it applies it really well. I just know that my nose gets extremely oily, so I'm really just patting it in. But make sure you are patting because if you start rubbing, literally everything that you just put on your nose is just going to rub right off just because you're literally rubbing it off, like duh. And then right in the center of my forehead, I like to put a little bit. Then I'm actually going to go in with a tiny brush. This is the Morphe M441. I'm going to dip in to that powder. Hold my mirror up here so you're kind of doing that like, don't be shy, put some more. You know that face? That's what you want to do. So look up, try not to make any facial expression and just rub it right under there. Then going in with that same brush and some more powder and drop your brush. That's also a required step, apparently. And then I'm just going to really rub this because I find that I crease a lot here. You can see on this side, like it has that little line. That just looks so bad. Sometimes I'll go in with a little future do and just add that on top. And the way I do this is I grab the tiniest bit. Like, do you see how much that was? It was literally less than half a pump. And then I go in with something like this, so like a little silicone pad or a beauty blender, and I kind of rub that into my hand so it like absorbs into here. And then with the lightest padding motions, I start right in the center and bring this up, not in here because we did put some powder there and these will not interact well. And then going into the beauty blender and literally holding it from like the end so you have like no control over it. Like, do you see how crazy that looks? I'm literally just slapping my face, but you want the lightest touch. Now I'm gonna do a little brow because I find that it completely changes your face. So I'm going to be going in with a brow powder. You can use an eyeshadow or you can use a brow pencil. I would not recommend using a pomade like the dip brow for an everyday look just because that's a little much. Then I'm going to go into this Morphe E11. This one is kind of like a bigger eyebrow brush. You can see it's kind of thicker than most. And this is two shades. So I'm going to start with the darker one. And I'm just going to kind of pat this in where I think I need it. And then going into that lighter one. I really do enjoy this brow powder. It's fairly new in my collection, but I really do enjoy it. Then in the front, make sure you don't put a lot because your natural eyebrows are like lighter here than at the end. Possibly one of the most important steps, go in with a spoolie and really spoolie it out. The spoolie is kind of like the blending brush of the eyebrow. So do you see how natural that looks? It literally just looks a little bit more filled in than this eyebrow. And then, ah! Oh, such a good product. The Patrick Ta for brows. This is inspired by the soap brow trend. So that's when people use soap to really gel their eyebrows up. But you actually wanna go into some setting spray. This is the Morphe Mac Fix Plus and just give it a couple a couple sprays. Then weirdly, you go in with a spoolie or you can use a toothbrush. That's what some people do. But I like using a spoolie and you just kind of grab a lot. It looks messy, but I promise it's not. And then you literally just kind of put that on and at first it may look a little weird. So not only am I brushing, but I'm kind of pushing it so it kind of just stays right there. So then I'm just gonna go over to make sure no brow, hair, brow hairs are sticking out. Now I'm just gonna quickly go do this eyebrow off camera and I'll be right back. Staying on brows, I'm gonna grab the Fenty Beauty Highlighter. This one is really, really pink undertone and really, really like white. So it looks really natural and I'm just gonna use a tiny pencil brush. This is the JH39 and I'm literally just gonna place this right here. And do you see how good that looks? Like look at the side and then look at this side. While we're at that, I'm gonna put in a little highlighter in the inner corner. I actually did this literally every single day this year for eighth grade. Like of course some days I didn't do it, but if I had three minutes to get ready, I'd literally curl my lashes and put a little highlighter here. Even if you're not wearing concealer, just having that inner corner like glowy and lighter than the rest of your eye makes you look so awake. Then, oh, my favorite thing ever, I'm gonna curl my lashes. This is actually a Tarte lash curler, and I really like this type of lash curler. As you can see, it looks a little bit different than like most lash curlers. I feel like it kind of does the work for you. You see kind of like the mechanism. Do you see how, like if I press the tiniest bit, like look, it's already there. You don't really have to apply a lot of pressure. I find that a lot of lash curlers, you have to really press down if you want a good curl. But this one, you just kind of do this really quick and it just curls it and makes it look so pretty. Then if you have pretty long lashes like me, but they're literally go straight out and don't curl at all. The trick is that when you're curling your eyelashes, curl the base and then go up a tiny bit and then curl go up and curl, then go back to the base and re-curl. This will make sure that the curl like kind of stays there all day. So do you see how good that looks and that curl will literally stay on for so long. Then I actually have this tiny little lash curler. You can get it on Amazon, search up like small individual lash curler. So I use this right in the inner corner to make sure it's lifted and looks really good because I find that the curler kind of struggles on this eye. Then always spool it through this, make sure it looks separated and fluffy. Then I'm gonna go into the lengthening mascara. This is the Extended Play Giga Black Lash 
lash, I guess. It's a mascara and it's for MAC. And I actually don't put this on my entire lash. I literally just go on the top and kind of wiggle that up. And I really do enjoy a lengthening mascara for my lashes because they are already pretty long. So I find that just curling them looks really pretty. But if I don't put on any mascara, it kind of lacks that depth. Do you see how like pretty that looks? Even just on the top, it extends it right where I need it. But I find that if I use a mascara on my entire lash, it will bring it down because most mascaras are either oil or water-based. And both of those components can actually take away the curl. And then I do put some mascara on the bottom and using that same one I always rub off the excess product because I hate clumpy lashes the tiniest bit You don't want a lot because then literally anything you do It's gonna be right under your eye and then on the bottom I actually do focus it on the root to kind of like deepen that in then I'm gonna grab that brush and go in with a little bit more powder I find that if you do wear bottom mascara you should put a little bit of powder under your eye Even if like you're not wearing any makeup just because your under eyes like can be really greasy or like wet And if that makes contact with the mascara if you think about it We use oils to take off our makeup So that oil will start to break down the mascara and then you're gonna look like a raccoon in three minutes Then last but not least my favorite gloss of all time. This is Fenty fussy literally. It's so pretty It's like really pinky, but it's not like Barbie pink. It's literally just the color of your lips it kind of looks like a clear gloss on and it's literally the only gloss I wear because it's super hydrating and it's not one of those thick glosses that like makes your lips stick together it just feels like a really good lip balm so yeah that's all for the video I haven't done a tutorial before but I do hope you guys enjoyed I literally am obsessed with this look and if I ever need to wear makeup out this is what I do because it makes my skin look so glowy and it just takes care of your acne it's just like boom clear skin automatically but it still makes it look so dewy so hydrated and just that like glowy look that makes you look so healthy and makes it look like you're skin is literally perfect. I'm obsessed with this look and I'm kind of scared to share my secrets because I don't want everybody to look this good. So yeah, I know this was a longer video, but I really just wanted to share my secrets so you guys can look so pretty and just so good. So yeah, please make sure you guys are subscribed and have my notification bell turned on so you get notified every single time I upload a new video. Also, please give this video a like if you enjoyed it and if you want more makeup videos from me. So yeah, I love you guys so much. Thank you for supporting me. I'm so grateful for everybody that follows me and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!